welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. Let's start with the news. Turkish troops have invaded northern Syria and have ignored the deal struck over the last several weeks with the United States not to enter new areas in Syria, not to bomb military Kurdish targets, not to ethnically cleanse Kurds and their families out of those northern Syrian neighborhoods, not to bomb civilians, not to cause the release of the ISIS prisoners, and yet they've done it anyway. U.S. is now retaliating with massive economic sanctions against Turkey. Weapon sales are being canceled by the United States, and trade deals are being canceled by the EU. And now Turkey is sitting on apparently 50 U.S. nuclear bombs on various bases in Turkey, and they could be held as ransom against the United States. Last week at the Pentagon briefing, the United States Secretary of Defense expressed U.S. policy, quote, we are deeply disappointed by the Turkish military incursion into Syria. We are not abandoning our Kurdish forces allies, and the Syrian Democratic Forces are still our allies who helped defeat ISIS. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs said, quote, we are still co-located with our allied troops, and we have only withdrawn from two small border areas. The Turkish invasion so far is limited, but airstrikes, tanks, and artillery invasion so far is up to 10 kilometers. Both sides of the uh, aisles in Congress are lining up with the Kurds and showing their displeasure. Even President Trump's strong allies, like Lindsey Graham, says, pray for our Kurdish allies who have been shamelessly abandoned by the Trump administration. And Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, who said, Quote, as we learned the hard way during the Obama administration, American interests are best served by American leadership, not by retreat or withdrawal. And those are two Trump allies. Joining me today is the vice president at the Center for Security Policy. She's a Middle East expert of long standing and an ATP contributor. Welcome, Claire Lopez. Thank you, Barry. I'm very glad to be with you once again. Thanks for having me. Great to have you back. Let's start. We were talking about the encyclopedia, also known as Claire Lopez. So let's start getting some of that information. Beginning with Claire, who are the Kurds? Well, uh, I think that's a good place to start to understand who these people are. Um, the Kurds are very ancient people. Uh, they have a distinct history, a language, a culture and a sense of nationhood, uh, but they have been repeatedly denied uh, the, the, uh, the opportunity to have a nation state of their own, uh, going back at least 100 years to the last century after the uh, end of World War I, uh, when with the defeat of the uh, Turkish Ottoman Empire, um, the British and the French uh, came to be the power brokers of, of the entire region. Uh, and sat down with maps and, uh, and pencils and started drawing lines, creating, for example, new countries where none had ever been. There never was a Jordan. There never was an Iraq. There never was a Syria. There was something called Al-Sham or Greater Syria, but there wasn't a Syria as we have it today. And um, at that time, it, it, it fell to the British and the French uh, to decide uh, about the Kurds. And um, as has been the case repeatedly, they betrayed them and deliberately uh, split up their population um, among four different nation states, some of which, as I just said, were just created out of whole cloth on the maps. Uh, and so today, uh, you know, since that time, uh, there is a, a presence, a, a Kurdish population in Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. And that's absolutely deliberate to keep them divided and, and uh, from forming a nation state of their own. So um, that, that, in addition to the sense of uh, betrayal that, that they obviously feel from multiple sides of, of great powers over the years, um, uh, you, you have uh, their own fractiousness within their own uh, ranks, uh, if you will. Um, it's an alphabet soup of groups. Um, that I actually need to have a, a little uh, cheat sheet of my own to keep track of, of, of all that alphabet soup and which is which. 
Um, but the point being that um, they have fought each other probably just as much as anybody else over the last century. Um, so all of that aside, though, this is a unique and a different and a distinct people. Um, they consider themselves a nation of people. Uh, and and uh, that, that, that's who the Kurds are. Uh, they, they are. I will just add one more thing. They, they, they are primarily Sunni Muslims, although there are others, uh, including even uh, Christians, among their ranks. Claire, I couldn't agree more. Now the question is, are the Kurds the good guys? That's a complicated question. I mean, is any people all good guys? No, they're not. And uh, people like the Yazidis, minorities among Christians even, in the area have plenty of complaints about the way they have been treated by the Kurds. Uh, but what I will say is that uh, over the most recent decades, uh, the Kurds have been, I mean, after the Israelis, the most pro-Western, pro-United States um, group uh, of, of people uh, in, in the Middle East. Um, and I think it's foolish uh, to cast them aside um, when there isn't just a whole lot to choose from. Again, uh, the Israeli people aside, the, the Israeli state aside, for the rest of them, not a whole bunch left who are so unabashedly 100% pro-West, pro-American, um, despite, yes, some very serious flaws in the way they have treated Jewish people in the, in, in the past as well, treated Christians even. Uh, treated Yazidis. That is all true. And, uh, you know, some of this, this alphabet soup on my little cheat sheet here, um, some of them include uh, groups like the PKK, which is uh, the Kurdistan uh, Workers' Party, um, originally founded some several decades ago as, as a, uh, a Marxist group that un undoubtedly has, has committed terrorism acts of terrorism uh, against uh, Turkey, um, hasn't done that recently, um, obviously is no longer Marxist. Um, uh, I would uh, recommend folks to take a look at a, a piece that Michael Rubin wrote uh, earlier this year in January 2019, uh, exactly about this point, um, too much to go into now, but a, a mixed bag, yeah, sure. Uh, the Kurds are a mixed bag, um, but, in the most recent past, these last eight years um, of the civil war in what used to be called Syria, um, the Kurds fought uh, the hardest and the most effectively, I would say, against the Islamic State, originally called ISIS, not that anymore now, of course, but Islamic State. And um, I, I, I would point to another new article that just came out today by Cliff May, at FDD, Federation for the Defense of Democracy. And um, he makes the very good point that for the very small number of American troops, special operations forces um, that were posted to these areas um, to fight um, alongside of the Kurds uh, against the Islamic State, uh, essentially our guys were providing more um, support in terms of uh, financial support and logistic support and uh, intelligence support than they were uh, actual fighting capability, uh, given, given their numbers. And it was the Kurds who actually did uh, the most of the fighting and the dying. And uh, that turned out to be, um, as Cliff explains it, a very good um, uh, uh, arrangement where uh, for bang for the buck of the few the few troops that we had there, which were fewer than a thousand overall, um, alongside the Kurds who actually did the fighting and the dying and lost thousands killed. Uh, and that's, that's troops, but also the fighters, uh, but also civilians too. Um, that, that was a, that was a pretty, that was a pretty good deal. Um, in addition to which our forces were not just there for the benefit of the Kurds. Yes, we were there to get rid of the Islamic State Caliphate, which kind of, sort of, we accomplished, but not entirely because it's coming right back again, especially now. But those, those few troops that we had there, um, you know, were also doing things like 
preventing the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, from, from establishing their desired land corridor to the Mediterranean or Shia Crescent, as it's sometimes called in the area. Um, our presence also, at least to some extent, I think, held the genocidal dictator ruler of Damascus, Bashar al-Assad, uh, somewhat in check. Um, and also, I think it, um, it, it, it allowed us and gave us um, a, a position from which to uh, deal with uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin. So for fewer than a thousand troops, we did all of that. And it wasn't just about the Kurds by a long shot. Thanks, Claire. And thank you for joining us today on ATP Report. I would encourage all of you to type the word T-R-U-T-H, truth, in your text message cell phone. Send it to 88202. You'll be automatically signed up to get all of our ATP reports, like the one today, all of our articles from all of our contributors, and it's always free. Again, for ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.